I'm Chef Dave and I haven't always been the handsome, suave, debonair guy you see right now. For years, I've lived my life morbidly obese. My mission with Eating Right Every Bite is to help others begin to enjoy their meals and their lives more fully. Every recipe you'll see on Eating Right Every Bite, they're designed for people who have had weight loss surgery. When I chose weight loss surgery as a tool to get my life back, it was in desperation. At my heaviest adult weight, I was about 410 pounds. Being a chef, I began to invent new and better recipes and prep techniques so getting protein wouldn't be a chore. You can truly enjoy delicious food while remaining committed to a healthy diet. My mission with Eating Right Every Bite is to help others begin to enjoy their meals and their lives more fully. Most people try to get rid of excess fat, maybe so they can fit into their favorite genes. But now researchers may have found an important purpose for those pesky fat cells, turning them into stem cells that can be used to treat injuries and repair damaged organs. Scientists at the Stanford University School of Medicine have found a new and improved way to transform stem cells taken from fat into pluripotent stem cells that can be used in regenerative medicine. Pluripotent cells are important in modern medicine because they can be induced to become different types of specialized cells, which can be used to treat injuries and other health issues. Stanford researchers plan to first use these cells to better understand human heart disease and eventually develop new treatment options. The new technique is both safer and simpler than current commonly used techniques, which use viruses to introduce genes into the cells or permanently alter a cell's genome. Instead, the Stanford researchers used microscopic rings of DNA to induce pluripotency in stem cells from human fat. The ramifications are far-reaching, notes cardiologist Dr. Joseph Wu. For example, in a patient with heart disease, scientists could simply do a fat or skin biopsy and reprogram the cells to pluripotency so they can become cardiac cells that they can study in the lab, rather than having to take cells directly from a patient's heart. The scientists hope that the ease and safety of the new procedure will smooth the way through the necessary FDA approval process. In other news, lap band surgery may become a more common treatment option for teens struggling with obesity if proposed regulatory changes are approved. The FDA is currently considering broadening its standard on gastric banding to include teens ages 14 to 17. Currently, adjustable gastric banding surgery is only approved for adults over age 18. Although surgeons are not prohibited from performing lap band surgery on teens, it's considered off-label use and is a topic of much debate among doctors. However, new information may help shift the debate in favor of weight loss surgery. When compared with those strictly in diet and exercise programs, teens who had the gastric band lost more than 10 times as much weight after two years, according to the new study. The study, published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, is the first of its kind to compare behavioral weight loss interventions in teens to gastric banding surgery. In the study, 50 obese teens ranging in age from 14 to 17 were randomly assigned to receive both the surgery and post-op diet training or to have no surgery and go through intensive diet and exercise programs. Two years into the study, the gastric banding group had lost an average of 76 pounds, while the lifestyle group had only lost an average of 6.6 .6 pounds, with some actually gaining weight during the program. However, the surgeries were not without complications. In fact, one in three patients in the study required a follow-up procedure. Dr. Jonathan Schoen, bariatric surgeon at the University of Colorado Hospital, says the safety of the surgery is something entirely unproven. He recently told ABC News, quote, there is no doubt that bariatric surgery has a very important role in adolescent morbid obesity. However, which operation will provide the best and longest term outcome is still a matter of much debate. And that wraps it up for another edition of the Weight Loss Surgery News. If you have a story you think we should cover, be sure to drop us a line at news at weightlosssurgerychannel.com. You can also find and connect with other members of the Weight Loss Surgery community on our Facebook page or follow the latest happenings on Twitter. I'm Leslie Thompson, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.